everyone I hope you're well uh, for those of you who didn't have a chance to get the sunset palette which sold out within a couple of hours um, as promised I'm going to do restock these palettes will be available tomorrow which is Tuesday the 17th of May on my Etsy shop Alona Creates at 3 30 p.m last time it was 2 30 uh, p.m this time it's going to be one hour later because i think uh, it's more convenient for some countries um so yeah 3 30 p.m uh, gmt these are my handmade vegan watercolors and uh, they have four colors in them I'll try to link you to a video up here, which is a very detailed video. It talks about uh, the colors, the, uh, I'm doing the swatches, the transparency tests, and I'm sharing the pigment info. So all of that good stuff is in that video. So make sure you um, have a look. So that's it for the update. And then if you still want to see this palette in action, uh, then I'm going to use these four colors in my uh, fashion girl illustration which I have already prepped a little bit of camera so I'll just try to show you so here we go I have stamped her also stamped these four colors to keep um, the color memo or the limited color palette on the same page and I use two stamp sets from my shop again if you're new and unfamiliar uh, they're available also on my Etsy shop Alona Creates and I'll just show you so that's the moving doll stamp set and you can create different poses and uh, different outfits so here are just a few examples and then this is the Swatch Joy stamping set. And I used this element here to stamp a limited color palette. So I helped myself um, to start an illustration by just stamping the posture and um, the face and then the rest I can add to it. So the um, I also will link you to the process of how to make this because um, the, yeah, there are a couple of videos. Also, there is one video that's coming up is this girl here, which I filmed a process video for that, but that's coming, I think next week, probably. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Um, oh no. Okay, <laughs> this pan, I don't know what happened to it. It just started suddenly leaking anyway this is permanent ink so it's uh, not going anywhere now um, okay so let's focus on kind of finishing the illustration so we started with a nude colored ink which means um, or stamping ink which means that we can go anywhere we want with it and I will let's see I'll give her a cute little bun here So I'm just going to start by um, doing line work. It's sort of um, cheating a little bit and skipping the drawing part, although you're drawing over it now, but you know what I mean, you, you didn't start from from zero you already have something that helps you so if you're not very good at drawing I find that these stamps really help you to start now think about the outfit and how you would like to present it because once you start using this pen Obviously, you'll see the marks, so. I'm giving her a, um, a wasp waist, but it is up to you how you'd like to approach that. Ooh, 
this is obviously not a realistic body shape it's uh, incredibly exaggerated uh, because it's inspired by fashion illustrations so it's very elongated very slender uh, by all means you can change it up a little bit if you want the arms to be shorter uh, or even if you wanted the, the legs to be longer you can still do that so up here mm, let's see Think about where the knee would be facing so that you can create these additional details. So I've done something like this. Um, you can see now the leg goes under that leg, so even though the stumps originally overlapped, you can then correct things as you go and change them a little bit with the ink pen. Okay, then also hair. Mm, maybe today I'll give you this sort of a fringe. And then the face. It helps when you're doing these drawings to be right with your face above it. Whereas I have the camera here. So if I would do that, I would block your view. Um, and so I sometimes get my lines a bit skewed because of that but of course if you're at home and you're not filming you're doing this for yourself in your sketchbook in your own comfort then you know it's it's better to be over it okay so I'm gonna go over with the ink pen now this bit is a bit optional and it depends what paper you're working on because it can start bleeding through to the opposite page and I have a lovely illustration there so I need to be really careful and maybe it would be better to go with a pencil over it rather than saturating it and making it bleed through. So I will leave it at that and later go over and fill everything up with pencil. I will also add some detail here on the calves, uh, on the arms, on the shoulders just to you know, create a bit of interest there. And maybe this time I'll add some buttons. I'll add two round buttons like that. Maybe also carrying on to here. That's it. Okay, so the next step would be to wait for the ink to dry fully. My ink dries really fast. This is the Platinum Carbon ink. It's waterproof, so it's fantastic for watercolor work uh, thereafter. I'm going to use a small brush because of the size of the illustration. So mine is around four and it's a Princeton Neptune brush. And first of all, I'm going to swatch out the colors here. So I'll start with Sargassum, which is a lovely orange. Now, Sargassum is a little bit on a dry side, so sometimes needs a bit more persuasion <laughs> to come out and play so if you really want a vibrant um, color then make sure 
you spend a bit of time waking it up. Similarly, red seagrass. On the first swatch, it's quite sort of, you know, pale and subtle, but it can be built up to a very vibrant color. Again, if you're new to these, watch the um, video that I recommended in the beginning of the of this video. Next color is Sandy Toes. So this is the only opaque color. It's also granulating. And a little bit of pigment separation also happens, but it depends how you use it, how much water you add, and uh, how much pigment to watercolor, or rather water ratio you use. Next one is liquid gold. So there you go, that's our color palette. Now with liquid gold, I like it to look like real saturated gold foil. So I love to pack it on. And I don't like a watery kind of wash with it, but you can mix it with the other colors to create a shimmer. So I'll see how I'll use it today. I might use a bit of, I might use it on her face as kind of like a gold um, goddess type of thing, you know, like a bronze goddess. Um, we'll see. We'll see what we we'll do today. Okay. Skin color. I'm going to mix up a little bit of this Sandy Toes, which is a great skin color that can go slightly darker and also Caucasian. And you can use it straight out of the pan. So the more water you use, the lighter it becomes. If you want it more color, use less water and then you can deepen it more with um, something like burnt sienna, for instance, if you wanted to. Or you could play with these colors in the palette here. Now it's granulating. Not everyone likes granulating uh, skin kind of um, in illustrations. I personally do. I think it adds that, um, you know, realistic look to skin. No one has perfect skin. After a certain age, anyway. <laughs> so, I think imperfections in skin kind of make um, or give character to illustrations. So that's that and then I'm going to go in her face so with the skin what I like to do is do it in sort of two stages and sometimes even three I go over with one layer of color and then I let it dry a little bit while it's still wet to touch I'm going to add a bit more color and this time a little bit darker so less water and you can see what happens immediately you create a depth oh hello sunshine of course <laughs> when it's no sun inside and I think it's perfect to film um, the Sun will end up popping popping out really so that's that, a little bit on the ears and a little bit around the face so it's less flat, just adding more dimension. Keep in mind if your first layer of color was quite thin and quite watery, it will dry really fast. So I'll leave it at that, let it to dry and then go 
um, over certain areas again. So this is the chill out time. Well, I was certain that I was recording this part, but apparently I did not. What a shame. Um, so sorry about it. So what I've done is after waiting for things to dry completely, I have taken uh, sandy toes again, mixed a touch of liquid gold and added um, a fair bit amount of water so that we don't get to a too opaque um, color here. At the same time, um, I wanted to have the gold come through and create that bronzy kind of summer um, suntan glow to her skin. And what we have is a very subtle, lovely way of adding a shimmer and sheen to her skin. So I hope I can show it to you and the camera will pick up on that. There we go. So you can do that with this gold as well. Like I said before, you can mix it in with the colors. And you could go even deeper because you can see here, the color is quite deep. And um, so yeah, you could create a deeper, darker skin tone if you wanted to. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do her hair. And I'm going to go for the sargassum. I have been enjoying illustrating girls with ginger, fiery red hair. So I'm going to try and make this as saturated as I can. And even if I wanted it even stronger, what I could do, if you remember from the swatches I showed you in the previous video, all you do is take a bit of the sargassum and put a bit of the red seagrass into it and that makes it even, even more orange. So look, it's like this gorgeousness isn't it beautiful I think so right not forgetting her bun so these colors are very very pigmented packed with loads of pigment so they can dry out quickly and they take up quite a bit of water so make sure when you work with them you just add water before they dry out completely okay what a gorgeous saturated orange when I'm looking at it in real life I can't tell whether there is um, red or orange or in fact there's um, a beautiful golden glow coming through and that's from a certain pigment um, that is used in both of the colors so it's one of my favorite pigments if you want to find out again watch in that video that I mentioned before All right, hair done. Let's move on to her outfit. And her outfit, I actually want her lips to match the hair. So I'm gonna mix up a very similar color to that. It's kind of not orange, not red. So somewhere right in the middle. It's a stunning, stunning color gorgeous oh hello son you are you wanting to come back <laughs> um, 
In terms of cheeks, I haven't decided yet. Sometimes I like cheeks, sometimes I don't. Let's see, I'm gonna go with the same color. And take most of the water out of my brush and then just create these little dimples. Sometimes I like to take it a bit more off and just have a very faint color. That's it, I think I like it like that. Not too much, especially if I have the hair and the lip that are quite strong. I don't want them to be a you know too strong cheek as well. Okay, God, I'm loving this color so much. I want to take it to her outfit. Hmm, <laughs> I don't want to be using just that color, but it is gorgeous. Okay, so let me do like a third version of it, somewhere similar to the lip, more red. Let's see how we get on. So, quite saturated is what I want. This color has such a beautiful glow, you can see how glowy it is. So I'll try to move this color to one side to reveal a little bit of the lighter side of it as well. Just for some dimension as well. I think I'll do that here too. In fact, I'll try to lift some of the color here. Just for highlight purpose, like that. All right. Um, so I'm going to set it dry and then work on these frills a little bit because my worry is if I'm going to go and add the color, uh, what will happen is that the, the intensity here will start moving into the new areas that we open up for the frills and so it will shoot out and we'll lose the intensity in those areas. So while things are drying a little bit, I set them with the heat gun but they're not fully dry yet. I'm going to take a dark blue color and I'm going to do her shoes in that color. It's a very intense dark blue, but you can still see that it's blue. And if you think about color theory, blue is on the opposite spectrum of orange and so they are you know they pop these colors when you put them next to each other and that is what I'm doing here I'm thinking about my my colors and how to make them stand out so I'm going to use that same color in her um, winged eyeliner so just like that and then for the eyes while we're still here I'm going to use a light grey colour so if I didn't tell you what the first one was, in fact, let me just swatch it out here. Just to keep our color palette going. So this was the Indanthron Blue, and then we have the Payne's Gray 30%. So then I like to take a white pencil and just blend it. I 
and then go over with a dark one again just over the pupils if, if I lost any contrast there okay all right and I think I can now try and create those frills I'll give them a bit of color so I'm just going to add a tiny bit of color right here in fact I'll try not to touch the um, colors there and then just with a wet brush I'm just going to add a bit of water there and so this is how you create these sort of puffs on the um, on the shoulders like that and I'll do the same on the bottom right here so just a little bit of color and then with a wet brush not too much water hopefully like that see if you need to add a bit more water Uh, I mean color rather than water if it's just a bit lost and you want there to be a bit more see how big you want it as well you might want to extend it a touch so I think that's good here so it creates that um, element of transparency so you can see through it um, and but it just you know adds a little bit of something I think she's pretty much ready um, I don't think I want to add anything else I will leave the eyebrows out for this look and I think I'll just give her some eyelashes and she's done so my signature eyelashes <laughs> that one is a bit curled at the end <laughs> All right, so here she is. I think she came out super, super adorable. I love the colors. Love, love the colors. So there you go. You can take this palette anywhere you want. Floral, botanical, um, fashion illustrations, uh, portraits, girl illustrations, face illustrations. Yeah, and, you know, many, many more, anything you want, really. Um, you can create just with this limited color palette, or you can add them to your existing colors and create uh, a more extended color palette, if you wish to do so. Oh my god, that looks so pretty now. I don't know if you can see with the sun hitting it. Let's see if I can showcase it a little bit more. Oh yeah, that looks so, so pretty. All right, well, there she is, <laughs> our sun-kissed little goddess. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you in my Etsy shop for the restock. See you then. Thanks for watching.